Google Analytics has a treasure trove of information about how users behave with your website. One of the things that I really like to use are the top conversion paths report within Google Analytics to see what types of sources folks are coming from to my site, what are the different touch points they have before they actually finally make a conversion? Do they start off coming from my paid campaigns and then go through organic and then through a remarketing ad before they convert? Or is it some other series of touch points? The one thing about those reports is that there are tons of preset options available for you to use, but it doesn't always drill down as far as we want it to. So today I'm gonna talk about how to set up a pretty basic filter for custom multi-channel funnels in Google Analytics, and then just give some ideas about more advanced options that you can do later. I won't be able to go through all of the options available because there quite frankly are a ton, but I wanna just show you what the mechanics of changing the multi-channel funnels piece is, setting up a custom channel grouping. So it'll get you started down the path of customizing this report to be as impactful as it can be for you. Let's jump in. In the Google Analytics report, you can find the top conversion paths report in the left-hand navigation under conversions, multi-channel funnels, then top conversion paths. And it's gonna look something like this. There's a decent amount of data that pops in and it will always default down to this MCF channel grouping path report. So you can customize the different conversions that you actually have coming in here. You can also customize the path length that you wanna see. Two or more makes the most sense because otherwise there will just be single line items. And then you can also adjust whether you want it to be traffic from all sources or just Google ads and then what the look back window is. So what we wanna start talking about are the report pieces down here at the bottom. So there are a number of different reports that you can start with. Like I said, the first is always gonna default you to the MCF channel grouping path report. And that's gonna look like this. They've got direct, organic search, paid search broken out. For this specific account that we're looking at, the main paths are actually around just these different touch points. There are a number of other sources and that sort of thing from this report, but since they don't have quite as much volume, they're just not showing up here. You can also then utilize any of these blue links for different ones. So let's look at the source medium path. And that'll look something like this. It shows Google organic was the first touch and then they came back through direct or just two direct visits so on and so forth, you guys get it, you're smart. Any of these other ones are just default reports that you can break into. And if you click this other button, there will be different parameters that you can choose under acquisition. And you can choose campaign path, keyword path, landing page URL. You can also choose things under Google ads, like the Google ads campaign path or campaign ID or all, all sorts of different things, search query path, lots of options to have available there. But one of the things that you might wanna start doing is to customize the report into something a little bit more specific. So today I want to break out our search campaigns between just regular first touch search and DSA campaigns, because I wanna see how they're performing differently when it comes to this top conversion path report. So the way that we'll do that is actually go to this channel groupings drop down here and you'll see there are two options. Create a custom channel grouping, which sounds like what we want, but I'll get to that in a second, or copy MCF channel grouping template. I would suggest for first time users, we're pretty much always going to do this copy MCF channel grouping template. And here's why. When I click on this, it opens up this entire builder and you'll notice that all of the preset groups that were part of that default report are already still in here. You can then click the pencil and start to break out the different settings for each of these. So if you wanted to change any of the parameters around direct, you can. You can even change the different color that you have going in here, right? You can make it look like whatever you want. If you were to go in and ch click on the create a custom channel grouping, it's gonna look like this. It's blank. You have to start from scratch and pick every single parameter piece that you want. It's got a little bit of a help down here if you wanna learn how regular expressions work in channel groupings, you can start from there. But for the most part, unless you're pretty advanced in GA or you just really want something specific to come out of it, I would suggest not doing the create and edit one from scratch. Instead, I would suggest that you use the MCF channel grouping duplicate and just adjust what's in there to what you need it to be. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'm gonna come in here and click the copy MCF grouping template. And then to get DSA as a separate line item in this, I'm actually going to change the name of the report that I've got. 
So that way I'll know what it is later on. So just MCF with DSA broken out. And then I'm going to need to make a change to the paid search group since that's where DSA will live in this regular custom channel grouping. So I'm just gonna click the pencil. You'll see the settings that Google Analytics uses by default to bring up the paid search group. So I'm gonna change the name of it. Now I'll know that it's just paid search in general, obviously I'll leave all the color and all that sort of thing the same. But what I need to do is I need to create an and statement to say that the campaign name does not contain DSA. So we wanna do campaign name does not contain DSA because I know that I don't use the three character pattern of DSA anywhere else in any of my campaign names. So I'm just gonna include does not contain DSA. And then I'll hit done. Now what I need to do is I've basically removed DSA performance from this paid search general group. So I need to add it back in for its own line item. So here I will just define a new channel and I will call it DSA. And then to get there, I'll do the same logic that I used for removing it from paid search general. But instead of does not contain, obviously we will use contains. And now I can choose whatever I want it to look like. For this one, I'll just do bright purple. That way it'll show up really well um, and click done. So now I have my custom channel grouping with my additional DSA channel in here. I'll click save. And you'll notice that when you click save, it automatically defaulted back to the MCF channel grouping path over here. So to find the report that we want, we come and click on this down arrow. And then you'll see that the line item of MCF with DSA broken out is saved here. Any of your custom channel groupings will be saved as part of this breakdown over in the channel grouping section. So we'll click on it. And in the same way that we don't have lots of other sources showing up down here, DSA also doesn't have a lot of volume. So what I'm gonna do is filter for it here to show the different line items that include DSA in my channel groupings. Now we can see DSA showing up. So we have a lot of folks coming from the site that click on DSA ads first and then come back direct once. DSA tw first time, come back direct twice. Some go through DSA and then come through paid search general. You get it, there are a number of different paths, but now we can see how DSA campaigns perform in comparison to paid search general. And it's not really a surprise that DSA would be the first touch here because the way that we use DSA is that it's got a little bit of a broader reach based on the content of our web pages compared to our actual keywords. If the keywords we want are that specific, they're gonna be part of the paid search general group. So this is how we can start to see things broken out separately to understand what the user flow is, what the touch points are that include a DSA campaign. There are even some that people start off hitting some of our keywords that we target and then coming back through DSA or an organic search through DSA or DSA through display. You guys get it. Again, you're smart, you can also read. So this is how you start to break things out into individual groupings. When you want to go back and make any adjustments to this, there's a little bit of a nuance that you need to do it. So when you clicked on this, you'll notice that there's a clipboard here. This just means copy the report that you have just created. You cannot edit directly from this field. But if you wanted to do the same type of iteration, you wanted to keep this MCF report with DSA broken out, but then also create a different version where maybe you also have remarketing broken out in your display versus prospecting. You can start to do that and create different reports and they'll all show up here. But if you want to edit your custom channel grouping, we actually need to go away from the screen and into the admin section of GA. You'll then need to make sure that you have edit access at least to the account that you're in. And over in the far right under view, you'll come down here and you'll see custom channel grouping beta. That's where we need to go. This will show you all of the line items you have for each different custom channel grouping that you've created. And there'll be a button over here that says actions. And this is how you can edit, copy, delete, share amongst different profiles if you wanna share it across a different view. But for right now, let's just say we wanna edit it and change a color just for fun, for sake of doing it. So let's say we wanna take paid search general from the thin blue with the outline to just a dark green. Just hit done, hit save, and it's as easy as that. You can also, like I said, delete, do anything else from here. You can also create a brand new custom channel grouping. The thing you cannot do from here is duplicate the default MCF channel grouping that Google Analytics has created, but you can create just a brand new from scratch grouping that you want here. So now that we've created the small color edit to our report, we can head back into top conversion paths, 
come down into our custom channel grouping and see that now page search general is just a bright green color just for sake of being able to see it a little bit better. So it's as simple as that. Custom channel groupings are certainly a step up from the basic uses within Google Analytics, but hopefully this short demo has showed you that they're nothing to be intimidated by, and they can be really useful if you wanna to start to see how different parts of your advertising campaigns are impacting the conversion paths, what the different touch points are that people have coming through. For the video today, I broke out just DSA versus our regular search campaigns to see how those impact since it's got a little bit of a different way of targeting search users. But there are lots of ways that you can use custom channel groupings to break apart performance for different segments. Let's say you wanna start breaking out the display grouping they have in there by default to see remarketing versus prospecting. Another way I like to break it down is if you're using a full funnel strategy throughout your campaigns across all of your channels, which I hope you are, you can start to utilize the custom channel groupings to see if your top of funnel efforts are really the first touch, if mid funnel are helping in the middle, and then if bottom funnel are the ones that are actually converting people, or if there's something else, are they going the opposite way? Are other channels helping out? What are the user flows that are coming in there? So think about all of the different ways that you could learn where are the ways that people come into your website? What are the different touch points they have going through all the way to conversion? And then how can you leverage that to optimize your campaigns moving forward? Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos.